Smells like walking into Michael's at Christmas time. Pine cones. What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today is a fresh full face Friday and it's not just any full face Friday. Today I'm going to be sharing my final thoughts on this little baby right here. This is the new Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I have it in Fair 2. We did a trying new makeup new at Sephora video where I showed y'all this on not a first impression basis, but getting to know the product. I've had plenty of time to get my thoughts together. I'm going to show it the way that I have gotten used to using it, provide some clips of like end of day wear test results, you know, close up on my phone. And it'll be an opportunity to revisit a bunch of other stuff from Patrick Ta in this video to get a nice glowy, you know, the Patrick Ta vibe. So that's, that's what's happening today. And you will hopefully leave this video knowing whether this is for you or not. So let's go ahead and jump in, shall we? So the first time that I used this on camera, I used it with the Ease Drop Lit, Ease Drop Lit, the new Fenty primer, and I'm just gonna be using it on top of my regular skin prep today. And one of the things that I heard from a lot of folks in the comments was that a sponge works better for this, especially for sharing it out. I've been doing that. I've been doing both. Sometimes I'll apply it with a brush, finish it with a sponge, but it is a very buildable texture, which is just not something that I have been used to using all that much, not to this extent. I have buildable foundations, but this is almost entirely made out of silicones. It's so flexible, almost to a fault. You know, I dip my sponge in there and it starts to take on whatever topography I've mashed into it because it's just that creamy and malleable. But if you need specific buildability coverage someplace on your face, it's gonna do it. And I am gonna use it alone, no concealer with it. That is something he did recommend using your favorite concealer with it, but I don't really think that it works that well with other concealers, especially when it builds as effectively as it does and you can get almost full coverage with it. A lot of them start to break up because it's kind of a disagreement in the formulas. Also, I don't really have concealers that even have this much coverage to them. So there's almost no point in dragging one out, you know? So this is with a sponge and this is different from the first way that I showed it to y'all. So that should be valuable to see. And because it's so flexible, so flexible, I do feel like you can manipulate the finish a little bit with a sponge too. And that's always kind of the advantage of a sponge. You get the sponge finish, but the actual finish on this, the claim is natural, but I think it's pretty satin. But I was talking to Nick Panisi over on Instagram about this. And it's just nice because, you know, I'm surrounded by some other creators who have a lot of the same items that they're testing that I do. And so I can get input from people who have different skin types than I do. And she said when she watched my initial video, she said that it was a lot drier looking, not drier looking, but like more satin finished on me. And it was a little bit dewier on her because she has a different, you know, skin type than I do. She has a normal complexion that might lean a little bit dry, but mine is like painfully excruciatingly dry a lot of the time. So the other thing here, and the reason that I do actually like buildability on it, or I like to build it when possible, is just because I don't love it worn translucently. Do you see how my freckles just don't look like natural skin? And so I think calling this a natural finish, I said this in the first video, but I think it's a catch-all when we are in, I don't know, a place in the beauty industry where especially millennials are used to wanting and looking for foundations that give you something that's really dewy. But a lot of times what's being sold to you in terms of dewiness doesn't look that good on camera unless it's shot in like natural light on like 20 year old skin. And so this is something that actually photographs better and it is maybe a little bit more like perfecting and blurring even in person. And so I feel like they kind of try and strike like a riding the fence ambivalent balance of calling it a natural finish instead of saying it's satin matte because there are just people who wouldn't buy it if it said it was satin matte, but it is kind of satin matte on me. You know, like a hydrating satin matte. So like the formula itself is not dry, but the finish is definitely not like dewy or smoothing. I prefer something that gives me smoothness. If I'm gonna have this many silicones, I want smoothing, okay? I want that nice glycerin -y finish. And it just doesn't do that. 
but I don't hate it. And I told y'all like the main thing was it piqued my curiosity because the first thing that it reminded me of was something that I would get at the drugstore back in like my, my youth, as it were, you know, using like the CoverGirl cream stuff on a sponge that would oxidize like crazy. This feels like a much more my elevated version of that. All right, so I am going to pull out my Angie hot and flashy concealer brush here, if I can locate it. And I'm gonna use that to build this. And I, I kind of feel like it will build indefinitely to the point of going cakey. I feel like it's more want to build than it is to sheer out. If you try and sheer it out, I feel like it kind of gathers in the pores. And again, I don't love the color that my skin looks through it. So I do have some spotting here from being out in the summertime sun. Boom. Always be mindful though of the fact that if you lay too much on, it's gonna soak a little bit more powder up, but like these dry spots, discoloration, boom, gone, gone. But like, I still have pores, okay? It's not the Thrive Buildable Blur, you know? I don't wear that because it's got octane oxide in it, but it's so smoothing. It makes you look like a glycerin goddess. And this definitely has like a luminosity to it, but not that glossed finish. So what I tend to do is use the MAC Fix Plus when I'm done. It's not a tragedy, you know, that it's not the exact finish that I'd be looking for. So I am gonna go in next with the powder here. It's kind of a brightening powder, but he does say, don't use it under your eyes if you want a really brightened under eye, but I am actually not a huge fan of a super bright under eye. And I do, I'm finding, have to like, really look up when I do this because I'm starting to get like these mash marks when I put my brush down. Aging, love that for me. I'll go ahead and give you all my thoughts on this, if that's really the only reason that you came here and not to, you know, be entertained. I like it and I keep reaching for it because it's so nice on camera, but in person it's a little makeup-y and the wear time tops out at about six hours. I will throw in my footage that I took after six, five and a half really, of wear. It's okay, but it's not how I would prefer to look after six hours. It's just a little bit too particulated. I feel like the main disadvantage is actually the way that the powder and the cream don't always want to go together. I'm going to show y'all up close in real life. Now this is definitely partially user error, but look at it caking up right here. And that's just because I put a little too much on underneath my nose in an attempt to build it. Sure, you know, you can use some finishing spray or something and it'll help, but to me, that's very not the vibe. <laughs> and I just want everyone to be aware of it because the way that it sort of intrigues me could easily be the reason that it is such a heck no for you and you wish someone would have told you that it was gonna do that. Like, I was promised buildability and this is what it does. I really feel like it's worth pointing that out. This is not a perfect product that like puts itself on for you. But it is unique in the sense of how flexible it is. You know, I feel like the only places that it starts to crease even a little bit on me is where I have really tried to build up that powder. And so I'm. it might be, I case of the powder being the problem. But should you buy a compact that contains two makeup items if you only want to use one of them? Probably not. All right, so I do have plenty of Patrick Ta products in my collection and plenty that are quite loved. This one continues to grow in its pan on the contour. So this is the Cream Contour Powder Bronzer Duo in the lightest shade, which is called She's Statuesque. And this is clearly a favorite of mine. So I'm going to start with the Cream Contour here. And Patrick Ta does do some really beautiful hybrid textures. And I think that that's what made me want to believe with the foundation. And I don't entirely disapprove of it. I just kind of think it's not quite there. And it might be exactly what some people are looking for, but I just feel like for what it is, this very medium to full coverage, it likes, it seems to like to build kind of formula. It should have more wear time. It kind of reminds me of like a Charlotte Tilbury, like a magic foundation in that sense, where you're like, ooh, what a perfected kind of mattified finish. And isn't this pretty? And it just kind of like breaks down on you too quickly. It doesn't have enough stabilizer to it of some persuasion, or it's just a case of going too over the top on too many silicones. 
And I did say that, you know, there are foundation formulas, plenty of different kinds of formulas that can be done in by just having too many silicones and they just stay too slippy. And I feel like that's the case with this. It's just a little too silicone rich for me. And as an alternative, honestly, it reminds me enough with like the luminosity and the coverage level of the Lisa Eldridge, especially if you already have a powder on hand. I would probably go for the Lisa Eldridge over this because it has just insane wear time, like event level wear time. It has the right balance of silicones in my opinion. And it's not quite this much coverage and buildability, but at the same time, like most people would also include a concealer. And more concealers are going to agree with the Lisa Eldridge formula because it isn't so silicone-y. It's not like entirely silicones, you know? But I do appreciate Cosmetics that are purely cosmetic. We were talking about that when I reviewed the Westman Atelier skin tint recently, where, I don't know, I talked about how they have these skincare claims about efficacy levels of actives in the formula and how that really, honestly, kind of ticked my skin off. And that maybe wearing efficacy level actives in your daytime is actually doing more harm than good because your skin does need a chance to rest. And I couldn't believe how many people that seemed to resonate with. There were so many people that were like, yeah, I don't want actives in my daily makeup. You know, I don't need skincare in my makeup now. I make exceptions for Shantikai because their formulas are so beautiful and they have never irritated my skin one way or the other. But I just red flags go up, you know? And there is something to be said for something that is just makeup. I love this powder bronzer. It's a funky texture. All his stuff is kind of inelegant in the pan, I'll be honest. Like when you're using any of his powder products, you're like, this wants to hard pan and it looks kind of icky. It's not very smooth. All the stuff kind of mucks up and I think it's also in contrast to just how elegant this package is right when you open it. Anything's going to look like an imperfection after that, but it goes on so beautifully. So I haven't even powdered my cheeks with a setting powder because I genuinely don't want to, but this bronzer is not just a lovely formula, but it's a really great bronzer shade on me. Like it looks so natural. That's what Patrick Ta does best. If you're unfamiliar with his line and his style of doing makeup, he knows how to make skin look like summery and healthy and vibrant. And that bronzer is just kind of everything. Yeah, I can kind of get carried away using this. The bronzer is a little bit more like his original monochrome moment blushes that are a lot sheerer and then his major dimension blushes, I wanna say. The cream and powder duos, those are way more pigmented. All right, we have She's Adorable, which is a lovely peach shade, but also you can see like it wants to hard pan a little bit. So I do have to really grind a brush in there to use it, which has never been a problem, but at the same time, it just feels very inelegant. Like I don't have a calming feeling when I use this because it looks like it's trying to die, but it has never really been an issue. I did pick up the new Gucci blushes, not all of them, but I got two of them and one of them in the shade that you would expect me to get, which is that super desaturated mauve rose kind of color. Look at it, look at it, look at it. This is the shade Rosy Beige. Anyway, putting on a different color of blush. I have never seen a shade from him of blush that I couldn't wear. All right, let's get really close here. And granted, does he say use this under your eyes? No. <laughs> he says use your own concealer, but I don't know of a concealer unless he puts one out that has enough silicones to really stand up to this formula and not look even worse than this. And it might just be a case of the powder. The finishing spray is gonna help immensely, but like right now, I'm looking like a Monet, you know? From far away, it's okay, but up close, it's a big old mess. <laughs> you know what's not a big old mess? This right here. This is the Major Dimension 2 eyeshadow palette. I have Major Dimension 1 and it's good and I like it and I liked it before this came out, but oddly, I do like the pinks better. I'm gonna start actually with some of his cream shadow here. A little bit of a primer moment. Smooth everything out. Make sure that we're, you know, doing this the way that it's supposed to be done. Man, one of the hard truths that I'm having to face is just how much easier it is to do um everything, but mainly my makeup. When I have short nails. I love having long witchy nails. I love it. Makes me feel powerful, but 
It's so much easier to do my makeup when they're short. And it does have two of those cream shadows. So, you know, you can use the deep one to get totally like different dimension out of it if you want. If your heart desires, something I have learned about this palette is actually that like, there are palettes that lend themselves better to like fluffing and <laughs> fluffing. And there are palettes that lend themselves better to like placement of color. And this one you can get away with buffing the product on initially, you know, sometimes. <laughs> Shadow palettes just don't, you know? And so like you can take a really big brush and just lay down your first couple of colors. I'm tapping because I'm setting that primer, but these colors are just so accommodating. And I mean, it is kind of a Charlotte Tilbury vibe, you know? I feel like Charlotte Tilbury and Patrick Ta are kind of arriving in the same place in a lot of cases. It's like, do you like pink? Oh no? Well, let me introduce you to my friend Brown. Those are easy shades for us to wear, typically. If you can't wear pink, you can probably wear brown. And you can probably find a pink or a brown that you can wear. So that was just the lightest shade. Now I'm going to go in with a smaller brush here. This is the A504 from BK. That was the 201. And I'm gonna start with this guy right here. This one is much cooler. A really lovely Pat McGrath Divine Rose sort of color. He makes easy makeup. I'll, I'll give him that for sure. I know that a complexion product is probably the, it's always going to be like the most polarizing formula for people because it's just about how you do your makeup and has a lot more to do with skin type and your environment than any other product in someone's range. And so it is definitely not a referendum on his judgment or his entire line that this isn't my favorite foundation that's ever come out. But again, I've been wearing it because it, it's pretty. And also because I want to, you know, get my head around it and get a good idea of it. But it's not perfect, not for me. Maybe it's just not meant primarily for me. But it's not matte like the Gucci, you know? I guess I just, I don't know. There were so many for a while, and I, I understand that this could be very frustrating from a brand owner standpoint. There were so many for a while that were so the same. And they were just that nice dewy finish, or even like looked dewy a smooth, glossy kind of finish, radiant finish, foundations and skin tints and stuff that I could see a brand wanting to do something different. And I do appreciate that if you're gonna put out a product that it has a unique viewpoint. It's not just a me too product because you know, I get these questions about, I did, I ordered the iconic London skin tint, which I'm sorry, I am like this close to declaring Iconic London a copycat brand. And there's definitely something to be said for something being a dupes brand. And people are always kind of quibbling over whether those should exist, but it does make certain types of makeup more accessible to different budgets. But if you're going to charge Iconic London prices and all you're doing is copying other formulas, I don't know y'all. I don't know, but it remains to be seen. I'm going to be trying their skin tint, but like the Summer Friday skin tint, Porta Hemplo. It's fine, but it's unremarkable. Like at least this is remarkable. At least this foundation is doing something new. <laughs> at least I have things to say about it. There's nothing more frustrating than trying a foundation for like upwards of two weeks and having no real conclusion about it. That's also what I always say about Janessa Myricks, right? I didn't love, love her complexion products, but I also am psyched that she gave me so much to sink my teeth into in terms of giving the product a point of view. It's not forgettable. All right, so I'm just taking the lightest shade in here and that is one of the disadvantages of this palette for it having 10 eyeshadows and two creams. There isn't anything light enough to serve as like a matte or even really mm, shimmery highlight on me. They're all quite medium to deep. I would honestly argue that they are mostly medium. I was perusing TikTok this morning. I am definitely, again, we've talked about this a million times, but I'm not a TikTok person. I'm not really a short form content content person, but I did just watch Jackie Ina's video last night talking about burnout and she is so clever. She's just got such a great sense of humor. And I feel like she understands how to make short form funny content, you know, and also short form just effective content. And so I, I don't know, every time I see someone who succeeded, someone that I like and that I admire succeeding by swapping over to TikTok, I'm very like intrigued anew as it were to go over there and see if there really is something for me. And I'm still just, I'm okay watching things on TikTok and appreciating them, but it has nothing to do with beauty content. So, I don't know, there has been 
a lot of frustration. I talk to my fellow creators about it quite a bit because we feel kind of not just forgotten by the algorithm, but genuinely like they're using us as some kind of like test subjects when they're making changes to the algorithm because you know, there's all these recommendations of like how you should make your content based on how previous content has performed and then you'll do that and it'll be like an airtight concept and Google just won't do anything with it. And y'all know, I am not the person who thinks that the algorithm is some kind of like evil malicious force and just like wants to blame everything on the algorithm all the time. But like lately, it's inexplicable. One of the conclusions that we arrived at last night was, when I was talking to my friend about this, was if YouTube chooses not to promote the content of smaller creators and only to focus on gigantic creators, it's not gonna draw new eyes to the platform. People are going to leave and they're not going to see those large creators either. So, and I'm sorry, I think Mr. Beast is a, probably a very nice person, but I cannot get behind his content. I like don't care about it, you know, I think it's for kids. Anyway, I am always churning on these ideas just trying to figure out what the next way to evolve is. And like, honestly, Jackie scared the hell out of me last night when she was talking about, she's been doing it for like, you know, 12 years. And she goes, I think that everyone on YouTube who's watching YouTube already knows how to do their makeup. And I was like, oh no, because like, I'm not really teaching tutorials, but at the same time, like you have to have some kind of curiosity in order to click on a video or to Google something where you might find someone's video on YouTube, and if that curiosity doesn't exist anymore, then, you know, what is it, right? If Especially if it's all the young people, due to attrition, you know, if it's all the young people, and they're just going over to TikTok, and learning, how, oh my lord, I can't even imagine trying to learn how to do my makeup only using TikTok, TikTok hacks, TikTok hacks, you know? Like, that's not helpful. And somebody said, oh, they can only upload in like, you know, semi low quality or whatever. And so it's not really beauty filters. It is beauty filters. All those girls have beauty filters on because I have uploaded content to TikTok and it doesn't look like that. Like I know what a beauty filter looks like and it's just not helpful. It's not helpful. And it's just a regurgitation of the early days of YouTube and Instagram. And I'm sorry, I'm like really cynical about it because I don't find it useful. I don't find it objectively useful. Like, I don't understand how anyone finds it particularly useful. If you have a creator that you think is just like really killing it out there, besides like Shelby, obviously I watch Shelby, the, you know, comment that down below because I'm very curious as to what kind of content on YouTube appeal, I'm sorry, what kind of content on TikTok appeals to people who would want to watch my videos? Because I can't find it. I'm like Sam Ravindall. Sam Ravindall was complaining about that. She's like, I understand there's great content on, on TikTok. I can't find it. And it's also really hard to find anything on TikTok if it's not just like, you know, pushed directly to you. There's no really good search functionality. And that's because Google is the founder of search functionality. So there's always going to be that. But I do also feel like there are just genres that are gonna keep outperforming beauty if the algorithm is not supporting us, you know? And that is my complaint session. I am done airing my grievances. Let's put some glitter on my eyeballs. What? color shall we do i like this one that's like this i think the only duochrome in the whole palette and it's like gold pink which you know you might you might have predicted right and then i'll have to pull something else out to do like my brow highlight that's cool i like the way that the light hits that it's very sheer and it's hard because i'm still so excited about the content. I'm so excited about the makeup. I don't want to condense it down into like a five minute, three minute, 15 second video, whatever. I don't know what they all are. I wanna be able to show everything and I wanna be able to talk about it the way that you would with a friend. The same thing Sam was saying in her video, if you haven't watched it, she talks about how you just like are not forming any kind of bond with these creators. Like she says, there are people who I've watched dozens of videos from for a long time and I couldn't even tell you their names. That's also why I have no urge to go and make flash in the pan content trying to go viral is because to me, like I don't wake up in the morning and go, ooh, like, yay, look at all these views. Like, sure, views, fine, great. That's how we make money. It's fantastic. I'm very proud when I get a lot of views, but I'm even more like fulfilled when those views <laughs> translate into human beings interacting and connecting with the content and feeling like 
something really resonated because that's why I started a YouTube channel is because I loved when content resonated with me. I just feel like regardless of how strongly we like implore on our specific platform, like until we go and like put commercials for YouTube on TikTok, <laughs> Which maybe I'll do that. I'm just gonna start taking clips of my videos and uploading them to TikTok and being like, wanna see the whole video? Let me introduce you to my friend, long form content. Come see all the details. Turn it on in the background while you do dishes. Yes, welcome to the new millennium. Like, come over to my YouTube channel. I just, it's like, I was joking about it. I was like, you know, Gen Z is so hyped about reinventing the early 2000s, maybe soon as quickly as the trends move, they'll be hyped about recreating the 2010s and they'll want to get back on YouTube as some kind of, uh, you know, vintage land grab. We can only hope. Oh dear. I'll take a video of the deer for y'all. Hi. Aww. So cute. They actually have, that one's a baby, I think. And then one of them has something called Bullwinkle syndrome. His nose is all blown up. He doesn't seem too bothered by it, but it's very strange looking. Yeah, there they are, just nim nim and awesome trees. Nim nim nim. I think they like our yard because we don't use pesticides. Let's give this a spritz here. I'm gonna do it before I do my mascara and stuff because I'm gonna be using the Tower 28 mascara today. Been enjoying it quite a bit, but I'm waiting for some other stuff to come in the mail before I give y'all a review and like a, you know, wear test results and stuff because. Uh, they're finally sending me all the mauve stuff. Super pumped about that. I'm gonna do my eyeliner, my brows, and my mascara, and I'll just zoom through it, and then we will throw on a lip, and I will do a quick and dirty on the foundation claims and whatnot, and close with my final thoughts, so. Let's do it. <laughs> from Powder Top. I love this stuff, I really do. I'm gonna put my lip liner on here. By my lip liner, I mean the khaki lip liner from Thrive. Big luxurious doe foot. Smell <laughs> smells like walking into Michael's at Christmas time. There's no mistaking it. it. Smells like those pine cones. It's spicy. That's the Powder Top vibe, y'all. Do I feel like I need to put a little bit of bronzer in my eye look, yes I do, because I wanna bring a little bit of that savory brown up in there, you know? Kinda makes all the difference. Okay, let's chat about the claims on this foundation if you didn't watch the last one, and just so that I can refresh my own memory. Did I say it was $58? It's $52. Comes in 24 shades, pressed powder formula, natural finish cream formula, good for pores. Good for pores, well good, because we all have them. Best for oily combo or normal skin. So they're saying this isn't really for me, for dry skin. What it is, a duo that includes a blendable medium coverage cream foundation paired with a satin finish powder. What else you need to know? Sorry, I'm salivating because this lip gloss is so spicy. It's not super, super spicy, but it's definitely like, it's a sensation. This duo includes a buildable, breathable cream formula that melts into and moves with the skin. It also includes an airspun setting powder that blurs the appearance of pores to create a flawless looking skin-like finish. So that definitely checks out. One of the things that I did say about this initially was that it feels like you've already sprayed it with a really flexible setting, pow setting powder, setting mist, because 
it does flex with your skin and then like if you do have like you know 11s and stuff like that like it'll flex and then it'll kind of recover the way that it would if you sprayed it with the hourglass veil setting mist or something but again it's not particularly for my skin and so there is something to be said for that of like trying to shoehorn my skin type into a formula that wasn't necessarily made specifically with me in mind is kind of like me standing here and being like trying jackie ina's like powder your primer before you put on your foundation technique and being like well, anyway look like this is the Sahara desert Meh. and it's like because it wasn't meant for you <laughs> okay and so i definitely would say like this does back up those claims, you know, of saying like, it's not necessarily for this skin type. And so it probably will have a different finish on the people who it's actually intended for. But I think with the setting mist, I can get something really gorgeous out of it. It's a really pretty finish once I get, you know, the Mac Fix Plus on. Let's turn this down. There is a lot of cloud cover, so it's kind of changing its mind how the lights want to be outside. So yeah, I would say that if your, your expectations were already set by the claims on the website of being like, okay, but could I get it to work for me if I have dry skin? This is what it looks like. It's not ideal. And I do recommend, I guess, less than saying I recommend it over this product, I recommend the Lisa Eldridge over this product if you have dry skin and like what you want was this look, but you do have dry skin and this isn't necessarily meant for you and the way that this looks on me right now isn't ideal and the wear time isn't ideal because it's gonna break up kind of thing. Like all of my opinions on it still stand, but under the umbrella, the caveat of, and this isn't really intended for me. <laughs> You know, if you do have like combo skin, I bet this does work a lot better for you or even normal skin. So definitely go check out some other reviews from people who do have, you know, closer to your skin type if that's the case. But a lot of people do watch me because they are kind of a skin twin or at least a dry skin twin for me. And I would say that, you know, there are better things for dry skin than this foundation. And Patrick Todd told us that up front. <laughs> I just didn't bother to read that. And also, I guess I just really am passionately in love with all of his products. And so I really just wanted to round out my collection. There's something to be said for that as a creator to just be like, I want to get the full experience. And hopefully he'll put out some kind of skin tint at some point, probably be a little bit more oriented to my skin type. But I am proud of him. Like I always say about, you know, things that tend to be polarizing and have a stance. Like I'm really proud of him for doing something that is so new to me. I feel like it's really new. It's a very different formula. It's very unique and I can't really compare it to anything else in my collection. Nothing behaves like this. Final thoughts. I am such a believer and remain a believer in the entire thing that Patrick Ta's brand stands for. Like the look, the vibe, the aesthetic, the color stories, you know, the very unique finishes and the textures and everything that he does so well. I am still a huge believer. I just, I know now I can contextualize my experience with this product within the fact that this wasn't intended for me. And like, that's, there's something really beautiful about that. That means it's probably gonna be somebody's favorite foundation. I don't think it's a flop. I don't think it's a fail. Like, I'm glad that I tried it. And it looks fantastic on camera. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Oh no, this is so sad, but it kind of reminds me of the appearance of the Bite Beauty Foundation pour one out because Bite Beauty is no more. But the Bite was more accommodating to my skin type and so it looked better close up and in person too. It wasn't, you know, all smoke and mirrors. It wasn't such a Monet situation, if you will, but this is very similar to the appearance of that. If you liked the Bite and it was a little bit too maybe hydrating for you, this might be the one. It does make me miss that formula. I really hope Bite comes back somehow. I wish they would have sold off their formulas to some people the way that Becca did. I really wish that I could buy a refill of the micellar foundation when I run out. <laughs> Sad. And overall final thoughts on everything else. I, st <laughs> I still love his eyeshadow palette. I still love his blushes. I still love his bronzer and contour. I still love his lip gloss. Like I, I should have used his lip liner. I forgot I have his lip liner. It's over there in a drawer. But either way, still love his lip liner. I will continue buying and pursuing all of the all of the dreams that the the Patrick Ta fantasy is selling to me because I'm not disappointed yet. So I hope that this was helpful for y'all. If it was, please do give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. The best way to pay it forward to a creator that you like is to share their videos and bring new eyes to the platform and to their videos. 
I would really appreciate that if you feel so inclined. So that would be awesome. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. I love y'all so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.